welcome. You may notice that Tara is not here with us this morning. She's not feeling well, and so we told her just to stay home. But there are some COVID cases in the school system. I told her to stay home. So the music, um, Jennifer Meyer, we are so thankful and blessed that she's here and able to be with us. So follow us along as best we can with the music and the flow of service. And thank you, Jennifer. Leaping upon them, 
bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young span. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the window, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. Flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning um, is portions of Psalm 35. We will read by whole verse. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips, because God has blessed you forever. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of the kingdom. You love righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, your, your God, has anointed you with the oil and gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia, and the music of strings from ivory palaces make you glad. King's daughters stand among the ladies of the court. On your right hand is the queen, adorned with gold of her fear. Our second reading is from James. Every generous act of giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creation. You must understand this, my beloved, that everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If anything they are religious and do not write on their tongues or deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to care for orphans and widows in the distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thus observing the tradition of the elders. 
and they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All of these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jeremiah 17.10 I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind 
to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. In the gospel text today, the message that Jesus is delivering is that we are not defiled or made unholy by what we take in, but by the corrosion of the human heart. In this text, Jesus addresses three different audiences a group of Pharisees and scribes who raise the question of defilement, the crowd and the disciples, the true character in Mark's gospel, don't understand. The first audience to whom Jesus speaks here are the Pharisees and scribes who have come from Jerusalem. Jesus' three different versions of this message build on one another, thus enabling a fuller understanding of what is at stake. We must prepare our hearts and thereby ourselves for the kingdom of God. This requires not worrying over what we eat, but how. The conflict between Jesus and these scribes and the Pharisees begins with the question of ritual purity, although Jesus quickly steers the question in another direction. The Pharisees and scribes noticed that some of Jesus' disciples were eating with defiled hands without washing them. The text continues with a parenthetical explanation that the Pharisees and all of the Jews follow the tradition of the elders by washing their hands thoroughly before they eat. The claim that all the Jews follow the same tradition is an overstatement. The mere fact that only some of the disciples did not wash before eating tells us that not all of the Jews follow the same practice. The tradition of the elders refers to oral interpretations of the Mosaic Law, which the Pharisees and scribes considered authoritative. As the parenthetical explanation continues, those who follow these traditions do not eat anything from market unless they wash it. This phrase can also be read, when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they purify themselves. Jesus knows, of course, that when the scribes and Pharisees ask why some of his disciples do not wash their hands, the question is not an innocent one. It's meant to indict Jesus, asking why some of his followers do not live according to the tradition of the elders. It's really accusing Jesus of not following the law himself, of acting as if he believes himself to be above the law. It's trickery. And the same sort of things happen today. It is heartbreaking to see Christians distort God's word and use it to prove an argument they may have, to set up an us-against-them dichotomy, and the them is usually other Christians. Knowing this, Jesus responds with a review from Isaiah, which changes the direction of the conversation. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Jesus calls them hypocrites because they abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. This reproach is more than a condemnation of empty worship practices. It's a condemnation of the scribes and Pharisees' distortion of tradition in order to circumvent the law. Jesus is not rejecting the law. He's rebuking them for their failure to uphold it. In vain do they worship me. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. This tradition shaped by human hands and hearts, is about them and not about God. The Pharisees' question reveals their focus. They aren't angry that God's holiness is being violated. They're insulted that these people are setting themselves apart from those people, or us, as is our custom. The question is polarizing and separatist, not a genuine question, but focused on causing separation. Jesus gets right to the heart of the matter and calls them hypocrites. Hypocrites. We've heard that word slung around some if you've been in church for any time. Usually those outside of the church referring to those who attend church. Usually for something those people did that seemed to be out of character. And while the accusation can be a smokescreen to point away from ourselves to someone else, look at what they're doing. They are hypocrites, is the premise worth reflecting upon. A Christian did something someone referred to as being hypocritical or false. It was not something outward that was done that causes Jesus to use this term, but something inward, something deeper. It wasn't that this person smoked or doesn't smoke, drank or doesn't drink. It was the heart 
that caused Jesus to use this term. Jesus stated that there's nothing outside a person that by going in to the body can defile a person. But it's the thing that comes out of the person that defiles a person. That which is from within the human heart is that which defiles evil intentions. And he lists them. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these things come from within, and they defile a person. And all of these things, interestingly, point to our interactions with other humans. Jesus calls us to pay attention to what is coming out of us, because it's even more important that we express the holiness and purity of God to the world, not by separating ourselves from those who are different. How we treat one another is a sign of how we worship and imagine God. Loving our neighbor as ourselves appears to be superior to separation in the name of holiness. Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 24, 3. In our culture, the heart is often used to reference love and our feelings, and that's okay. But more importantly, what comes out of our heart, this inner dwelling place, is what defines us as people. We're told to guard it. For everything that we do flows from it. So the question is, what is the state of your heart today? Listen to me and understand, Jesus says to the crowd. The heart wants what it wants because that is what we've allowed it to want. That is what we have fed. Listen and understand. Guard your heart. Be careful of setting up human traditions in place of obeying the commandments of God. Stand with me as we recite the words of the night of the trees together. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of the one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and it was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and punished by He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, his works and glorified. He is a token through the fathers. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We have one common found baptism for the forgiveness of sins, the will of the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world will come. Amen. 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 Amen.
that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect and be with the people of Afghanistan. Be living bread to those who are hungry each day. Grant safe departures to those who are seeking to leave. Be with our servicemen and women and those who have no shelter. Provide homes for all those who are being displaced. Protect the vulnerable and the innocent. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with the people of Haiti. Provide shelter and food and hope. Give us eyes to see and wisdom to know how to help. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those lives who are closely linked with ours and grant that they may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, including Susan Courtney, and Nancy Caronda, and Deron Burley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, including Marie, Howard, Christine, Susan, Melissa, Nancy, Joan, Debbie, Scott, John, Karen, Gary, Bob, Debbie, Sandy, Randy, Sandy, Brenda, Lola, Gail, Nancy, Billy, Paige, Russell, Shirley, the Harder family, May and her family, and Diana. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. We ask your prayers for those in military service, especially Brandon, Zachary, Kelsey, Katie, Terry, Holly Ann, Nicholas, and John. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Paul Cameron, Jack Morrison, Shirley Keffler, Karen Ho, and Pat Schick, for whom the flower and altar flowers are given, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with James and all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do ask especially that you be with Brandon Wilson this morning, who is on our prayerless issue. I see him at the front and at the gates at the airport in Afghanistan. Protect him and our fellow servicemen. Lord, we pray for those in Louisiana and the coast. Protect them this morning from the hurricane. Lord, be with our nation and give us wisdom as we continue to be with them. Lord, our God, Accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious and lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
and also with you.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We will lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this sound to proclaim the glory of your name. Keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them and remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. is dry. 
says the
Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank <laughs> you. 